Um, now, I want to start off this week's Big Shoe by talking about something that we love to talk about here on the show. I want to talk about crazy psychosexual drama. All right. And also Wonder Woman. Okay. We talked we talk two weeks ago about Wonder Woman and our shared uh, anger over the new Wonder Woman movie. Not because we hate women, but because that's just how much we hate the goddamn DC Cinematic Universe. Yes. It just sucks. It sucks. And just because you made one movie doesn't take away the pain and frustration that we all felt from Batman v Superman. That's right. But here are two and things that I wanted suicide to Suicide Squad, man. Really. Oh, suicide yeah. I keep forgetting squad. about that. I keep forgetting about that. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time deciding which I hate. No, I hate Batman versus Superman worse because in Suicide Squad there was at least Harley Quinn. You know? Um, yeah. But other than that, Jesus, let your bad guys be bad guys. Batman v Superman hurts more because Suicide Squad, uh, other than Harley Quinn and the Joker, Suicide Squad features a bunch of characters that you don't necessarily know. Batman v Superman has the trinity of the three most popular comic book superheroes in existence, and it still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, every child is born instinctively knowing who Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman are. Why can't you make a good movie? Now, now, I, I, I don't... I don't think I've ever asked you this before, and I don't know why I didn't. But between Batman v Superman and Batman and Robin. Oh, God. That's a difficult one. This is a really difficult one. Like, like which one is better? Mm hmm. Um, I would say Batman and Robin would be better than Batman v Superman if for no other reason it does have a very impressive color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like Batman v Superman is all neon and like garish, like, like, like the, the Vegas strip vomited all over a comic book. Yeah. You know, Batman v Superman is just drab and gray. <laughs> They're both equal, equally painful, though. I will say that. And the plot was also drab and gray. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But we hate so two DC. Things I wanted to mention. Huh? But yeah. We yeah, hate no, DC. We yeah. Two things I wanted to mention regarding Wonder Woman. Two, uh, two more things, and then I'll drop Wonder Woman. Uh, number one. Yes, Wonder Woman is a feminist icon, and yes, the movie the movie means a lot to women and young girls everywhere. And yes, this is a very empowering film. But it's hard for me to see Wonder Woman as a feminist icon when she's still almost exclusively written by men, inked by men, penciled by men, and almost always drawn with boobs better than bigger than her freaking head. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. So it's difficult for me to see her as a, oh, yes, a strong feminine icon. Now let me draw her as a stripper. Yes. And, uh, okay, there you go. There's your strong feminist icon. <laughs> oh, the oh yes. Oh, the body. Yes. I based it on a specific issue of Hustler I had under my bed. <laughs> That's what I based my drawing of Wonder Woman on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be good girls like seriously if you really want her to be a feminist icon then you would stop getting a male comic book artist to sexualize her she's a hero she's not a hustler pinup i'm looking at you frank cho <laughs> you've well, seen him a lot lately they they tried getting her into into uh the wonder woman thong but they couldn't fit enough stripes on it oh yeah <laughs> Eleanor, Eleanor, the noodles are all done. The noodles are all done. Here, do you do you want a do you want that? Maybe. 
maybe. You don't want it? Okay. That's why I, I really get obsessed with kids' books that feature female superhero characters. I just love looking at them. Like we get these beginning readers and these little kids books that feature, you know, female comic book characters. And I really just love staring at them because it's like, Oh, this is what wonder woman would look like if you weren't trying to sell her as a sex symbol. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, this is what Harley Quinn would look like if she were a normal person and not some sort of stripper model escort. Yes. Oh, how interesting. This mm -hmm. is how a non-sexualized female comic book character looks. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's number one. Number two, I find it a little bit funny and a little bit odd that of all the news pieces and all the articles and all of the things that are being written right now about the history of Wonder Woman and the history of the character of Wonder Woman, yeah. all of these things are being written and all these puff pieces about the history of Wonder Woman and how long she's been around and how important she is. They almost always describe Wonder Woman as being the brainchild of a male psychologist. Yeah. And, um, and that's it. That's all that they mention about the creation of Wonder Woman. And, yeah, you're missing out on a... A lot of freaking details there. That's like saying the Civil War was fought over labor. Yes. Technically, that's correct, but you're definitely missing a lot of details. So, so basically, comic books were violent and they were corrupting youth. I have a collection that an old friend of mine gave me, and it's uh, Tales from the Crypt, the EC Archives volume three uh -huh. and it features issues 12 through 18 of the original ec comics run of the original tales from the crypt and i've been flipping through it and oh my god there's some violent ass shit here like i like i when i was little my parents every tuesday my mom every tuesday because my dad never gave a shit my yeah mom would always take us to valley west mall in phoenix because there was a dollar theater there but on tuesdays it was 50 cent day. Uh -huh. Any movie you want is 50 cents. But it would sell out quickly, so you had to get there early. So we'd get there early and buy tickets and kind of spend the day at this crappy mall. So um, there was a Walden Books there. And my mom would give me $5 and I could buy whatever comic books I wanted. And the one thing I never told my mom was that uh, this Walden books carried the reprintings of Tales from the Crypt. Oh. So once a week, I would get a, a reprinting of the original Tales from the Crypt and all, all the other Tales from the Crypt that they released, like Tales from the Crypt and then like the Vault of Horror and the Haunt of Fear. Like I'd be buying these insanely graphic horror comics <laughs> and I'm like nine. You know you can't have the tales from the crypt, Eleanor. That now that's too young. But I haven't seen these tales from the crypt comic books until then. So I've been slowly but surely rereading these tales from the crypts, and holy crap, these were violent as hell. These yeah, were violent as hell, and it's like the it, these would be violent as hell now, and these were being released in the forties. You know, <laughs> there's one scene. There was a shockingly graphic scene at the end of one of the comics where um, a uh, invisible spirit that one kid thinks is his best friend and uh, the kid is being beaten by his father. So one day the invisible best friend has enough of it and shoves the dad inside their meat grinder in the basement. Oh, and that last panel is just holy shit. And this is 1940. And like seven year olds are buying this comic book. Yeah. You know, at the local local soda shop and shit. See, I didn't I didn't really read comics when I was a kid. We didn't have that kind of money. I, I like didn't get money from my parents or anything like that. Um so so I would only get like the odd comic book here or there. And yeah. the only two I could remember was a Daredevil Black Widow. I think they were okay. hooked up at the time. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and Midnight, The Witching Hour. Nice. And I loved Midnight, The Witching Hour. And I yeah. read through that one just like several times. And then 
Christ knows what happened to it. You know, yeah, I have no idea what happened to it. Um, but then once I started getting into comics, um, and back in my day, back issues were a thing. They seem like they're not a yeah. thing anymore. Yeah. Um, and they ha- they also had a bargain bin, and just one day for the hell of it, I decided to start going through the, the through the bargain bin. I found that motherfucking comic. Nice. I still I still have it. Whenever I wind up selling my comic book collection, which looks like never, um, because yeah. nobody wants to pay for them, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, that one's staying. That one's just got to stay. Cool. We used to have a bunch of stuff in storage, but then we lost the storage. So there's a bunch of stuff that we had a long time ago. Yeah. And we just don't own anymore. And I had a Fantastic Four number twenty, number twenty seven. Yeah. And like in, it was like in good condition. I think it was worth about eighty bucks. Yeah. It would probably be worth more now. I don't remember which issue. I just remember it was the first appearance of the Inhumans. Yeah. And they just released the preview for the Inhumans TV show. And I'm like, God damn it. This would be the one time when this stupid comic book that I had for like a decade would be worth something. Yeah. I I also lost a lot of my Ed Wood stuff, but I try not to think about it. Yeah. I mean, I've got like 3,000 comic books. You yep. know, and like the best offer, and, and in there, there's a lot of good shit. There is a yeah. lot of good shit, and with that, I can't get an offer above like a hundred bucks. Yeah, and one guy even told me a hundred bucks store credit. <laughs> like, no, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, come on, don't. Don't tell me you're not going to sell them for a buck a piece and make three thousand dollars. Yeah, but you can only give me a hundred. I have a number one Iron Man. I have yeah. almost a complete Captain Marvel run. You know, I I yeah. have I have the original Spider Man in the black outfit. Yeah, you know the first appearance when he. I think- yeah, I have the, the cross, have the Secret War crossover. Yeah, I have the issue where it first started to twitch before it actually became Venom. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, there's just one panel, and the suit in the back is twitching. Yeah. So you know, a hundred really? That is for me for lunch tomorrow. Yeah, I imagine that's a pretty common story of people with like comic book yeah. collections, and then like you spend years and years working on this comic book collection, only to find that like yeah, nobody wants them at all. And I've been lugging them. I mean, this is four long boxes. I've been lugging this shit around for thirty fucking years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they've come from Long Island to Colorado. <laughs> So, so comics were violent. They were corrupting the youth. And uh, let's not forget that when Batman first showed up, he had a gun, and he would straight up kill villains. Yes. Let's let's not forget that. So DC tapped a famous psychologist, and his idea was, I know how to get these moms off our back. Let's create a chick superhero. And... Fortunately or unfortunately, this famous psychologist, his sex life, yes, yes, his sex life is important to the creation of Wonder Woman. Yes. Unfortunately, because this psychiatrist lived in a house with his wife and his lover. Yes, <laughs> he was into all this kinky shit and mm-hmm. and and 
B and D and S and M and swinging and free love and whips and being tied up. And unfortunately, a lot of that shit spilled into the pages of Wonder Woman. Each mm-hmm. issue in the forties always ended up with Wonder Woman being uh, taken hostage or being kidnapped by a man, by a villain. And if you know anything about bondage at all, then you see the pages of Wonder Woman and you see the insanely detailed illustrations of her being tied up. Yes. And you're like, okay, yeah, no, this dude was into some kinky shit. Mm -hmm. Because the way, if you see in this panel here, the way that they throw her into the car with her wrists tied together to her ankles, that's not something that someone who doesn't know about this sort of thing. Yes. Like, okay, it's obvious that the people drawing this comic book were into some stuff. No one talks about this at all, which is surprising. There was a whole book written about it. it I, 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 I've heard about it. I've heard about it a lot. And well before this movie came out. Yeah. But now the movie's coming out, and they're like, yes, Wonder Woman began life as the creation of a psychiatrist. Now we're just stopping talking about this and talking about something else. In the 70s, she wore a miniskirt. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's quickly change the subject. Yes. 